last year during Timex's Black Friday sale, I picked up a Waterberry that I thought was interesting. It looked to be a tan and cream version of the more famous Redwing Waterberry, but I wasn't sure because there wasn't any information on it online. So when I got it, I decided to remedy that for anyone else who'd be interested in it. And on December 11th of last year, I created a new YouTube channel called Relative Time and uploaded its first video, which was a review of that Waterberry. Now re-watching that video, I can tell you that I had no idea what I was doing. And even today, I'm still not sure how much I know what I'm doing. But I keep plugging along and trying to improve where I can. But looking back, I can tell you that it's been a fun, crazy year of hard work that I honestly wouldn't trade for anything. And I just want to take a second out to thank all of you who've been watching, because you've really joined me on this journey. And I really hope that you enjoy watching these as much as I enjoy making them. Now, since I started this whole thing with a Timex, I thought the best thing to do would be to end this first year with another Timex. And I thought the best watch to do that would be the new Timex Marlin Automatic. The Marlin Automatic is the 40mm big brother to the Marlin Mechanicals, which were introduced last year. Although it's not simply a bigger version, as they do have a different dial, as well as a completely different movement. Rather than using an off-brand Chinese movement like the Mechanicals, they decided instead to use a Miyota 8215 here. The first four versions were released on October 1st of this year, with a fifth version being released a month later. And that fifth Snoopy version was originally the one I wanted. Unfortunately, they sold out after about a week and haven't been in stock since. And I've only seen them appear on eBay for a, quite a premium. So instead, I opted for the normal silver version. The case is stainless steel with a rather simple design, which is a throwback to the original Timex Marlins. It's almost, but not quite spherical. As the case tapers as it goes to the back, as well as to the front where it meets a very domed crystal. Meanwhile, a very narrow edge goes along that midline. The finishing is decent, and to be frank, it really should be at this price. The lugs are interesting, and I like the look of them. They're not very thick, and they extend out at a downward angle a bit. They're rather minimal, which helps the case maintain its rather rounded appearance. As I said, the case is 40 millimeters wide without the crown and about 42 and a half width. Lug to lug is just over 47, and it's a little tall at just over 13, but a lot of that is due to that domed crystal. Lug width is 20, so plenty of strap options. And surprisingly, it weighs a very light 54 grams, which I assume is either due to the acrylic crystal or a rather minimalist case. Water resist is a minimal 30 meters, so be a little cautious. Although I'm not sure if that's in keeping with tradition or just the way the watch turned out. The crown is at the usual three. It's not signed or anything special. And I wanna say that the gap between it and the case is maybe just slightly larger than normal. But it's not something I would hold against it. And I think it's mostly due to the rounded case design. The back is an exhibition case back. Now what that crystal is made out of is still a question for me. I couldn't find it listed anywhere, so it could be acrylic, or it could be mineral. Now as to the front crystal, it is beautifully done, but I think it will cause some division among enthusiasts. In keeping with tradition, they stuck to an acrylic crystal. For me, while I appreciate the look and tradition, personally I would prefer to more mineral, like what's on the Orient Bambino, but I can't understand how someone would rather have acrylic. I guess it just depends on how you look at things. With acrylic, you can easily buff out any scratches you get, but you might get scratches more often. As with mineral, you are more scratch resistant, but if you do get a scratch, well, you're kind of up the creek. Now that crystal and minimal case wind up helping your eyes focus on the dial, which clearly is the main attraction and star here. On this model, it's a brilliant metallic silver with a dramatic sunburst effect. The overall color scheme here is that silver mixed with black highlights. The hour indicators are applied black bars, which appear nicely done with almost an enamel-like finish. The dial also curves downward as it reaches the edge of the painted chapter ring, which is apparent as you can see a small sliver of the hour indicators just slightly hang out over that edge. The watch comes with simple sword hands, which are also in that black enamel-like finish. 
but they also have another feature which might cause some division, as they are adorned with white loom. And there are many that think that loom has no place on a dress watch. And here, the loom is not very bright, so it's rather limited in its usefulness. Now, while I was initially opposed to the white loom on the hands, I can say that after some time, I've actually come to appreciate it. Not so much for the loom itself, but because of that white section, it adds some needed contrast and really helps those hands pop out, and I think adds to the overall design. Now, the funny thing about doing these reviews and getting all these camera shots at different angles is that sometimes you notice things you otherwise wouldn't. In this case, you might have noticed what looks to be fine scratches to the left of the Timex logo on the dial. Now, I'm not sure if these are scratches or maybe it's something on the crystal. Although, even though it looks pretty obvious here, in real life, it's not. You have to get the watch at just the right angle and light to even start to see these. Looking at it under normal conditions and angles, they're pretty much invisible. So I can definitely say it's not something I would have noticed on my own. So there are some possible QC issues here, depending on what it is. But it's hard to fault them too much when it's not obvious to the naked eye. And it is possible that those are marks on the crystal that came from my time with it and I never noticed before. Now, with the exception of the date window, the dial is rather clean, with only the Timex name and the phrase automatic painted on. And I appreciate the small font which was used on both. And the black text of that Timex logo does look nicely against the silver backdrop. Now, as for the date, usually I like a date option when it's available. But here, I think it was the wrong choice. It's small, very small, and for whatever reason, it's really hard to make out. Maybe it's the crystal, or perhaps it's the font choice. Worse off, the date wheel on this one appears to be slightly misaligned, with the date appearing almost at the very top of the cutout. So overall, I think they would have been better leaving the date out, which they did do on that Snoopy version. So perhaps it'll be an option on a non-Beagle model in the future. But even with the date window, I think the dial design is excellent and beautifully executed. It's a simple and elegant design, one you might not fully appreciate until you see it in person, or the sun. So as for the movement, it's a Japanese Miyota 8215, so you have a standard beat rate and close to 40 hour power reserve. Hand winding, but no hacking. So it has the standard pros and cons you would expect here, no real surprises. It's an older, but well-known workhorse model, so it should be very reliable and decently accurate, with the biggest downside being a noisy rotor. And as for accuracy, on this one it was pretty good, gaining about 6 seconds a day. Now last, but certainly not least, we come to the strap, which is pretty good. It's a nice quality brown leather strap with matching stitching. It has a nice texture and rather pliable, and who doesn't love a good leather smell? It is a signed small buckle on the end, but it is fitting for a dress watch. Overall, the strap is pretty good, although I'd say it's definitely not as good as the leather strap that came with the Waterbury. My only complaint might be that the loops are a little thin and I think will wear out first, but it should last you a good while. Now because of that strap and the light weight of the watch, it wears nicely as well. Even though it's 40 millimeters, I'd say it wears just a little smaller and those longer lugs stretch out across my 7-inch wrist, so all you really see is that dial. It's easily a watch that you can forget you're wearing, until you need it. Overall, I'd say I like the Marlin Auto. I think it successfully takes a classic design and modernizes it for a new generation, while maintaining the elegance and simplicity for which it was known for. Other than some possible QC issues, my only real complaint here is value. The MSRP on the Marlin Auto is $250, and for now, that's what you should expect to pay. But even at that price, I think it's a little steep when you look at the rest of the market. Now, I usually don't like to compare a name brand watch to some off-brand Chinese watches, but I think it's worth pointing out here that many of them can be had for a fraction of that price with the exact same movement, although not as well executed as the Timex Marlin is. But otherwise, it's also very hard to ignore that there are a lot of options at that price. And if that vintage style was something you were really interested in, the Orient Bambinos can be had for a bit of a discount, 
sometimes even half as much. So value is not a reason to buy a Marlin, but what is is its uniqueness. Not in its design, but in its place in the world. Now Timex stopped making mechanical movements in the early 80s, and today's Marlins, whether they're mechanical or automatic, still have a connection to those predecessors and to the history of Timex itself. A name which has deep roots in the history of horology and to Americana itself. And for some people, that's actually the most important thing. And if you're one of those, then I don't think you'd be disappointed with a Marlin Automatic. Now, I ended that first video by saying that I think every collector should own at least one Timex, just for a connection to that history. And it's still something I stand by today. Now, you guys know what to do with the comments below. But before I go, I just wanted to say thank you one more time. Not just for watching this video, but for watching and joining me on this journey over the last year. I really couldn't have done it without you.